Hey everybody, I'm Lisa Roberry. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome back to this series. Oh my gosh, there has been so much time that has passed and it has just flown by since I have given you any kind of a hysterectomy update. Um, I will say you will notice I am in the Sensi room. This is my filming room. Um, typically I like to do these like history. I, I say typically there's been four videos. <laughs> Um, but usually when I'm doing these hysterectomy videos, it'll usually be I'm sitting on the couch or things, but um, this just works for me today. So that's why we are in here and we're not talking about Sensi. We are talking about my hysterectomy. We are now four months post-op, you guys, four months it blows my mind. So I wanted to take a minute and sit down with you guys and just kind of chit chat. I have had some questions come in, so I want to go ahead and address those. And then I just want to tell you how I'm doing and how I'm feeling and just kind of everything up until this point. It has been, it's been a wild ride for sure. Uh, definitely I will open up and say this was by far the best decision for me that I have ever made. Um, I could not be happier with my decision. The only regret I really have is that I didn't push for it sooner. Um, I know that this particular surgery or procedure is not necessarily for everyone everyone. So if this is something that you are considering, definitely consult with your medical professional and see what your options are and see what's going to fit best for you. Um, I'm just putting my information and my experience out there just to share um, my own personal experience. I am not a medical professional, so I'm not giving you recommendations, but just like I said, just to share my experience because I felt um, kind of alone in starting my research on this because I didn't personally know a lot of people who had had a hysterectomy. And then when I kind of started opening up, I realized how many people do suffer with this pain and um, have actually had hysterectomies. Like once I kind of opened up, it's been amazing to see the amount of um, women who have reached out and said, hey, I had a hysterectomy. It was the best decision I ever made, you know, this, this, and this, you know, and it, if that's you, if you reached out to me, thank you so much. You have helped me in a way that I can't, I can't even describe. So, um, me putting, being super vulnerable and just putting all of my personal business out there, if it helps one person, then it is absolutely worth it. So if that's you, I'm rooting for you. I'm cheering you on and just know that you're not alone. You are absolutely not alone. There are so many women who deal with, who suffer, who suffer with pain um, and, and you know, have to go through these surgeries and it's scary. It can be a really scary thing. So I just want you to know that you're not alone. So uh, let me just kind of give you a little overview of where we're at. So like I said, we are four months post-op. <laughs> it just, like, I cannot believe it's been four months. Like it's it, in one, in one hand, it feels like, everything just happened yesterday. And then in the other hand, I feel like, oh my gosh, I have finally been without pain for, you know, way longer than four months, but um, it's it's been incredible. So on December 21st of 2021, I had a total hysterectomy. Uh, this was, it was done laparoscopically. <clears throat> this was a decision that I had made. I was suffering with insane amount of pain every single month. My bleeding was bad and um, I was done. <laughs> I was just, I was done with the pain. Each period was getting worse and worse and in terms of pain. And I honestly, it got to a point where I, I remember the exact period <laughs> where I was laying on the couch and my husband said, I, I, do I need to take you to a hospital? Like he, I, I feel like I deal with pain pretty well, um, but it, that pain, you just can't, you can't deal with it, you know? Um, and I honestly felt like if I, if it gets any worse than this, I'm going to die. Like I honestly was like, I don't know how I'm going to get through the next one because each period was worse and worse than the one before. And I just thought, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I, I don't, I don't know how I'm physically going to do this. Um, I would take over the counter medicine, ad, you know, ibuprofen, Advil, Tylenol. And, but I, because the pain was so much, I couldn't keep anything down. I was throwing it up. So I wasn't getting any relief from the pain. I would do the heating packs and I would do like as much as I possibly could. Um, but the pain was just always there. And it was to a point where at some point during every day, whether I'm on my period or not, I was dealing with cramping. I was dealing with pain. Um, a lot of times it would be like towards the end of the day, like, you know, you wake up and you're feeling okay. And then, you 
you know, I would go about my day and then, you know, by the end of the day, I am, I am in pain, you know, and whether I'm on my period or not, there was just always some form, some sort of pain every day. And I was just like, man, I just, I can't live like this anymore. Um, my husband and I did make the decision um, several years ago that um, kids were not in the cards for us. We just decided um, that was a personal decision for us that we chose not to have children. Um, and so this was this was okay. This was not something that was going to jeopardize you know, like that decision for us personally. Um, so you know it, this this was fine. My husband had had a vasectomy several years prior, so um, this was something that we knew for sure. Like you know that was like a for sure thing. Um, so I had reached out, it was probably June, I wanna say it was like May or June in 2021 that I had reached out to my OBGYN and said, I can't do this. <laughs> I cannot do this anymore. Um, please, what can we do? And I, w I was given options. It wasn't just straight to hysterectomy. I was given options of, um, you know, we can do the uterine ablation, which is basically where they go in and they kind of cauterize the um, the uterine lining. And um, I had done some research on that and there was a pretty, um, pretty high likelihood that it may fail. I know that um, I've actually talked to several subscribers here who have said the uterine ablation was like the best thing for me. And I am so happy for you. I, you know, I want um, the least invasive for, for everybody. Um, and I, but the most thing, the most important thing to me is that you get out of pain. Like that's the, that's the most important thing. You got to get out of pain. So whether it buys you some time, um, or whether it works for you, it's successful for years and years and years and it never fails on you. But um, the research I had done, my mom had had a uterine ablation and it failed for her. And I just felt like I'd rather not go through the ablation if we're gonna wind up doing the hysterectomy anyway, because I had talked to my OBGYN and he had said, um, so if we do the ablation and it fails, we have to wait six months and then we can do the hysterectomy. So I just thought, well, if it fails and we have to do that anyway, <laughs> like for me, I'd rather just go, I, I, I just want to be done with it. Like at that point I had hit rock bottom and I just wanted to be done with it. So <clears throat> I said, you know, I gave it some thought. I talked to my husband um, and I said, you know, what? I really feel like this is going to be the best decision for me. And I was confident in that decision and he supported me. Um, he wasn't doing surgery anymore. So he referred me to the most incredible surgeon in my opinion opinion um in the area where i was living and she took such good care of me and you know she trusted that it was the right decision for me i had met with her beforehand and you know told her my situation and she's like yeah let's let's do it so um they had done so they did find a mass on my uterus um they also saw a lesion on my uterus as well so um they because they had done some mris and things and um when going in and actually doing the hysterectomy like i said it was done laparoscopically so it wasn't abdominal so i have two teeny teeny tiny incisions that are just next to my hip bones um that just keep shrinking by the day and i couldn't be happier about that scars were not necessarily like a thing that i was worried about i was in so i i did not you could cut me from my chin down to wherever <laughs> and I, I don't care like I just wanted to have I just wanted to be out of pain I didn't care about the scarring I had a breast reduction so if you know what that kind of scarring is like um, I, I don't care about scarring I just I want what's best for me personally so but the fact that um, they're teeny tiny <laughs> it's really super cool so just down by my hip bones um, and like I said, they just, they keep shrinking by the day. So uh, that's awesome. But when they went in, um, sh she did take a picture for me and I have it. I'm not going to show you here. I am going to share lots and lots of very personal details here in this video. So if you're not into like the details of stuff, this is not going to be the video for you. Honestly, this probably isn't the series. If you saw my, my previous videos talking about pooping and whatnot and how I was feeling, I just want to be totally raw and real and just like put it all out there. So, um, just cause you just, you know, you may have these questions and you're thinking like, yeah, but I want to know, <laughs> like maybe people are embarrassed to ask or they feel like certain questions are off limits. Um, so I just figure I'm just going to put it all out there. So 
Um, so I had the hysterectomy. Um, she did give me the a picture of of what my insides look like. So um, I did have endometriosis plus a huge fibroid that was attached to my uterus. Um, she said it was about three times the size of my uterus overall. Um, she it, she was like this this is why you're in pain. But like endometriosis plus the fibroid like I this was this was the best decision for you so um, she said you know we could have removed the fibroid but the chances of it coming back is is pretty high so when you when you are prone to fibroids and these things like it just you're just like buying time until the next one comes. So she's like, really, this this was the best decision for you. And she was like, the, I, I don't doubt that you were in a, a, a tremendous amount of pain um, due to the size of this fibroid. And I've heard of women who have had several fibroids on their uterus and uh, that just breaks my heart. Like that, it absolutely breaks my heart. So, um, went ahead and took everything out. Um, I do still have my ovaries, but my uterus was removed. My fallopian tubes were removed, everything except for my ovaries. So I do still have both of my ovaries. She said that they looked um, healthy enough to stay. So that is fantastic. Um, I'm not because of my, uh, if you see me looking down, I just have a few notes because some of you had questions. So I want to make sure that I'm addressing those and I don't forget. So um, I, because I still have my ovaries, I'm not on any type of hormone replacement. This is once again, just my own personal um, experience. This is what my doctor has decided works for me. But because my ovaries are still left in place, we still get our hormones from our ovaries. So I have enough that um, I'm, I'm getting from my ovaries that I don't need to do hormone replacement. So I'm, I'm feeling great. I'm not having to do any of that, um, at least not yet. So feeling really, really good with there, with all of that. Um, someone had asked, how did going under anesthesia feel? So, because I feel like that's a, that's a lot of where a lot of people nerves are from. Yes, you're scared to go to have surgery and recover from surgery because you know there's gonna be some sort of pain or soreness that is involved with surgery, right? You're having an organ removed. So that, um, you know, you can be scared. Like it's, that's total, there would be something wrong if you weren't scared, let's, or have some nerves of some sort. Um, there would be something wrong. I was a nervous wreck. I was an absolute nervous wreck. And I'm going to, I'm going to tell you like my experience of like, of that, like going into the hospital and, and like with all the nerves and everything, cause we're still, we're still in a pandemic, I guess. I mean, who knows how long all of this, but is going to go on but i i had to go into my surgery by myself my husband could not come with me i know that's going to vary from region to region hospital to hospital but um in december where we were living in california before um i could not have anyone with me so that like really made me even more nervous like i couldn't have any family members with me and so um that made me even more nervous because i felt alone and i felt nervous and um all of that. So when they brought me back, you know, they, they ask you like, how are you feeling? You know, they take your blood pressure and surprisingly my blood pressure was actually pretty good. Um, leading up to the surgery, um, I was having some like blood pressure issues, um, cause I was going in for all kinds of like pre-op appointments and stuff. And, um, they were like, we're really concerned about your blood pressure. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what to tell you, but then I go in for surgery day and it's great. <laughs> Like, of course, of course, right? But, um, and everything's fine now. But um, it was just like a weird, like, period of time. We, by the way, <laughs> so we, <laughs> right after surgery, we moved out of state. So I'm sure that had something. So while we're like, getting ready for surgery. We are packing up our house, um, getting it like staged and ready to go to show on the market. And so I'm like, there's my blood pressure issues. <laughs> I'm not only getting ready for a serious surgery, but I'm also getting ready for an out of state move and to sell my house and to go through the home buying process and all of that. So, um, there's my blood pressure issues. <laughs> Everything's fine now. Um, but yeah, so went in and my blood pressure was fine, but obviously, you know, they were getting me ready and everyone was all the nurses were so nice and just explain there's like 75 nurses that come in um and they ask you if you know what you're there for what's your name date of birth your medical record number um do you know what you're having done today what are you allergic to like 75 different people <laughs> like they just they want to make sure that like 
they got the right patient or something. I don't know. It's so funny. But, um, you know, they did ask, like, are you feeling nervous? I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm nervous. And so they give you a little something to kind of like mellow you out. And I didn't feel like that did anything for me. I um, was still really super nervous. And uh, so as people were coming in and talking more and more and the surgeon came in, um, also funny side note, if you didn't see from my previous videos, um, I was actually on my period when I went in to have my hysterectomy done. Perfect. I was, so I told like every single person that came in, I was like, I'm on my period. I'm really sorry. <laughs> like, but they're like, that's what they're used to. You know, they're totally, they're totally used to it. My surgeon was amazing. And she was like, that's okay, honey. I am going to slay that dragon. <laughs> I was like, I love you. Um, so as the time was getting closer and closer, I was getting more and more nervous and I was just like, I'm so nervous. So then they're like, okay, we're going to give you something a little bit more for your nerves. And so they give you like a cocktail through the IV. And so then I really felt, okay, I'm feeling better. I'm feeling warm and fuzzy. I'm feeling okay. And I'm feeling like I'm in good hands and let's do this, you know? So they take you and they will you, at least for me, they willed me into the operating room. <laughs> We're going into the operating room. And I was like, it's my eviction team. <laughs> they thought that was so funny. But um, so with anesthesia, so um, for me and my experience, so they give you that little cocktail to kind of like chill you out. And then um, when it comes time, then they'll put an oxygen mask on. And they'll give you just oxygen for like a couple of minutes, I think. And then um, at some point they may have you count backwards. I don't remember if they had me count backwards. Um, I honestly don't even, I remember that they put the oxygen mask on and I was still pretty awake and, um, and with it. And then all of a sudden I was just out. So it, you don't, you're aware of things. Um, but first, like when they put the ox, the mask on first, what it is, is it's just oxygen. At least for me, it was just oxygen. So, um, that way you're not freaking out right when you have the mask on, you know, you've got the oxygen and then they just kind of like slowly put you under anesthesia. So, um, I was out and the next thing you know you're waking up and you're in recovery so that for me um i felt great <laughs> like i woke up and i was just like i really have to pee <laughs> i just remember like i really have to pee and that's really good because there's some um some hospitals will not actually release you until you're able to urinate or pass gas um my my um, surgery was outpatient, so I was able to go home that same night. But um, I woke up out of anesthesia and I felt really good. One thing I will say is that I did let the anesthesiologist know that um, I get really nauseous with anesthesia. If you are unsure, I would just say tell them you get nauseous because I feel like the vast majority of people do get really nauseous with anesthesia. So um, I would say, even if you don't know, just go in there and tell them, hey, um, I'm really nervous about being nauseous after going under anesthesia. And then they'll give you something to kind of help with the nausea. I didn't have any nausea whatsoever when I came out of anesthesia. So I felt fine. My main thing was I had to pee. <laughs> and they, the nurses didn't believe me. They were like, no, I don't think you have to be. I was like, no, I really have to pee. Um, then they, they stuck this like towel thing in between my legs and they were like, go ahead and pee while I'm laying down. I'm like, I, I can't, I, I can't, I just, I can get up. <laughs> like, I actually, I felt really good. Like I was like, I got this. Like, I just, let me go to the bathroom. Like I'm, I'm good really. Um, and so I, I, they walked me to the bathroom and I was, I was able to pee and I was just doing really well right after recovery that I really wasn't in recovery that long. They were like, you're doing really well. So go ahead and call your husband to come pick you up. I was probably annoying them. <laughs> they were like, all right, get her out of here. She's obviously just fine. So, um, so Sean picked me up and took me home, but that's kind of how that, that was my experience with anesthesia. That's how it was for my breast reduction as well. Um, like I said, just if you're nervous about being nauseous after going under anesthesia, just let, let your medical professionals know. And it's, it's really common. So they do have like a medication to kind of help with that. So, um, don't be scared to tell them when you're feeling nauseous. If, if you're feeling any kind of way that isn't normal, like just say, Hey, this is how I'm feeling. Like they need to know how you're feeling. So, um, don't ever be, um, worried about that. So, 
Um, someone did comment and say, your memory is going to start to suck. Um, my memory has sucked since before I had a hysterectomy. So I haven't noticed any like decline in that area at all. Um, it, I've never had a really good memory, so I don't know. <laughs> so I guess I'm not one to tell you if it's like, I don't think it's getting worse by any means. Um, I, I feel great in terms of the old noodle up here, but like in terms of like my memory, I don't, you know, as of right now, four months in, like it, there's, it's fine. So, um, also someone had commented and had a concern for weight gain. Um, once again, everyone is different. Um, I, for me, so because I had a higher risk of blood clotting, um, because I have a blood clotting disorder, I made sure, and my husband is absolutely amazing, make sure you have a really good support system at home. Make sure you've got someone to help you for the first, like, couple weeks. Um, if you can, at least that first week, at least. Um, but he was, even when I was tired and stuff, he was like, okay, it's time to get up and walk. So, I was getting up and I was doing um, little, like just walking laps around the downstairs of our home and just moving. Like, I think that's the biggest thing. Just make sure you're moving. You don't have to be doing, you shouldn't be doing any kind of exercising, especially right after surgery, but you should be moving and getting your blood go going. So I feel like because um, I wasn't really bedridden ever, um, I, I did listen to my body and I did rest quite a bit but I was still up and moving around and I haven't noticed. In fact, I'm, I'm actually down, I'm not down 10 pounds or anything, but I'm down like six or eight pounds from when I had surgery. Now, part of that is because we moved. <laughs> moving takes a lot of work. And um, we did just recently get back into the gym, but that's only been like a week, week and a half. So that's, there's no weight loss really there, but it's just, um, you know, just staying active. I think just make sure listen to your body. Oh, and that's the biggest thing that any medical professional is going to tell you is, you know, here, here's your guidelines, but it really comes down to listen to your body. Like don't, if, if it doesn't feel good, don't do it. That was, that was one of the things that my, uh, my surgeon had said, she was like, cause it was, it was it my six week checkup. It was my six week checkup. I think that she, I was like, so am I good to like walk my dogs and stuff? And she's like, if you know, test it out, try start out slow. Um, and here's the thing, if it doesn't feel good, don't do it. Like that, that's your body telling you that you shouldn't be doing that particular activity. So, um, she said I was, I was clear to, she said really wait till eight weeks. So that's what I wound up doing. But, um, in terms of like weight gain for me personally, I, I, haven't seen any weight gain. I would say, honestly, it's just like stayed about the same. Technically I am down a few pounds, but, um, I think that's because like we were moving and I was able to be a little bit more active with all of that, but, um, no real weight gain there. So, um, I would say, you know, for you just make sure that like after you have the surgery, you are still being active and you are still walking. Here's the thing. <clears throat> so many people feel like they have to be bedridden. And once again, listen to your body, but as much as you can, if you can get up and just walk, like not run for the love of all things, holy don't run right after surgery, but, um, you know, just take a walk. The more you're up and active and moving around, the more your body is going to want to heal itself. And you're going to heal a little bit faster too, hopefully. Um, and then I did have somebody ask about the stairs. Someone said that, oh, my doctor said absolutely no stairs ever. So that's going to vary from patient to patient and from doctor to doctor. So listen to your doctor. If your doctor says no stairs ever for the rest of time, you got to buy a new house. <laughs> listen to your doctor because they know what's best for you. My doctor said the first day, go ahead and stay. Gosh, was it? I should ask Sean. I can't remember if I stayed downstairs just the first, I think I just stayed downstairs the first night. And then she had said like, try the stairs a little bit at a time, you know? So if you go up the stairs, you know, try, have assistance, have someone with you and you know try a couple of stairs if you feel like you can do more then do more but really try to limit it to like once a day so she had after like i think i was home for a day i don't think it was two days because i think i only slept downstairs one day our bedroom is upstairs was upstairs in the old house so i think i only slept downstairs one day and then i want i really wanted to get back into my own bed so um stayed downstairs like that first night 
all of that like second day and then um, when it was time to go to bed that next night that was when I climbed the stairs for the first time had lots of assistance with my husband went nice and slow I was able to take a shower and then we went to bed and <clears throat> so that was so it wasn't like I was up and down the stairs like all day for like the next day or anything it was once I was up there I slept took a shower, you know, all of that came downstairs the next day and then I was down for the day. <clears throat> so listen to your body, listen to your doctor. If they say no stairs for a week, don't do stairs for a week. Definitely listen to them. They, they know what's gonna be best for you in your case. My doctor was okay with the next day. <clears throat> so, okay, now let's get into some juicy stuff. So if you don't wanna hear like super personal stuff, you should probably turn this off now, but I get so many questions about sex after a hysterectomy. So it is, once again, you're, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but listen to your doctor. Your doctor is going to know what is best for you. Um, some doctors have said you are released to return to sexual activity after six weeks. Some of some doctors want you to wait eight weeks. Depending on how you're healing, they may want you to wait 10 weeks or even longer. It just really depends on how you're healing. If you've had infection, if they had to go in and kind of fix anything, um, it really is going to depend case. It's going to be case by case. I had a physical checkup uh, at six weeks. At six weeks, um, by the way, oh, here's a good heads up for you guys. Um, when you go in for your, if you do a six week checkup, it's your first like physical check-in. I think they, it was like, I had a two week check-in over the phone and then it was six week check-in checkup, like actual in-person checkup. And then she did an exam and saw how everything was healing. Um, <clears throat> I had a friend who told me that at their six week checkup, so the scar tissue so when they when they go and they, they do the hysterectomy they have to um sew up the back of your vagina so it's called the vaginal cuff so you have that incision that's in the at the back of your vagina so when that's healing a lot of sometimes the scar tissue can like connect i guess it's i hear it's really super painful but if that happens then um, they have to do a procedure and they'll do it right then and there typically at um at the six week checkup where they basically like they cut or cauterize it so that like it can heal better so it stops like it I, I obviously am not a medical professional, so I don't have all these like technical terms, but she was saying <clears throat> like, we have to make sure that the scar, that it's healing all well and that the scar tissue isn't like bunching up or like, I don't, I, she did, was doing like this. <laughs> She's like, make sure it's not like overgrowing and the scar tissue isn't like looking like bad. So if it's starting to look like too thick or like it's overgrowing then they have to like go in and like cut it down i guess and they do it right then and there at that appointment so i would say i did not prepare myself um so i um i i didn't take any like ibuprofen or tylenol or anything before that appointment um thankfully i didn't need to have anything done she was like you're healing perfectly everything looks great so um you're good to go but she did let me know if we have to do that we are going to do that here today and like, okay <laughs> that's great i should have taken some advil um <clears throat> so um yeah so i would just say like just if you want to like preemptively or, or like take a little like precaution and just like pop a tylenol before you go to your uh six week checkup appointment i don't think it'd necessarily be a bad idea especially because you're you're still tender down there anyway and um, the surgeon's gonna go in and do an actual exam and like check the incision and make sure everything looks all good um <clears throat> make sure the vaginal cuff looks all like it's healing well and um just check everything so it wouldn't be bad to take a tylenol or something <laughs> before you go in um okay so um, at that appointment is usually when they'll tell you when you can return to your sexual activity. So um, my doctor said you'd probably be okay, but I would feel more comfortable if you wait two more weeks and wait until that eight week mark just to um, make sure because if it's not completely healed and 
you wind up breaking the incision, then we're gonna have to go in and we're gonna have to fix the incision, we're gonna have to fix the vaginal cuff, and then that six or eight week timer starts all over again. So it's like, in the grand scheme of things, just wait the extra two weeks, because <laughs> you don't want to, um, you don't wanna jeopardize that. You don't wanna jeopardize your health. You don't wanna have to start all over with the time in case something happens. Um, so just wait the eight weeks, that's, I know it sucks. <laughs> I know it sucks. And, um, you know, shout out to the husbands out there or the spouses out there that, you know, have to wait through this with you. But um, I think that's really important too going into this surgery is just being as transparent and open and honest with your partner as possible. So that way they know what they're going into as well, you know, because the, this, you're in your team, your, your partners, and, um, you know, you need that support as well. So, um, you know, they need to be supportive of that. So um, we did wait eight weeks, but um, right at eight weeks, we did we did have sex and it was great. <laughs> it was great that it's, you're always so scared. I feel like the first like couple times, cause you're thinking, oh my gosh, is it gonna hurt? <laughs> you know, cause you just, so I hope your patient, your partner is patient with you. Um, but it, it was it was good it wasn't pain it wasn't painful and for the first time i did not cramp after having sex and i didn't realize that i was cramping after we would have sex um it i didn't realize that until after we had the hysterectomy and so um it's a much more enjoyable experience now for sure. So we did wait the eight weeks, no issues there. Um, it wasn't painful. Um, a lot of people have asked like, is your sex, has your sex drive gone down? I'm so nervous about that. My sex drive hasn't gone down. In fact, I feel like it's actually gone up because now sex isn't painful anymore. So um, I feel like it's, it's actually gotten better. Um, some people have asked about lubrication. I, ha I haven't had any issues, um, but if you do have issues, there's products that are made out there for that. So, um, you know, don't let that determine if you are going to have to live in pain for the rest of your life or however many years until you just can't take it anymore. So that's where we're at. I feel absolutely amazing. Um, this decision for me to have the hysterectomy was absolutely the best decision I could have made for myself. I feel the best that I have in years, to be totally honest. I, I feel the absolute best that I have in years. I have more energy now. I'm no longer in pain. I was in pain every single day and I didn't even realize how much pain I was in until after I had my hysterectomy because I feel so much better now. Like I said, there's so much pain that was that I just was tolerating and not even realizing it. Like I said, I didn't even realize that I was cramping after we would have sex. Like I didn't even like, it didn't even occur to me that that's a problem. <laughs> You know um i it didn't even occur to me and then you know so why i don't know i just feel like definitely do your research definitely give it some thought but you deserve to live your life and not be miserable you know because this definitely alters your way of life for sure so four months post-op we are here and i could not be happier like i said the only thing i wish is that i would have done this sooner so um things have been great we are back to the gym like i said we've just gotten back to the gym there was i will say i felt a little like twinge once again even four months after listen to your body always listen to your body we had done um we had done some some planks <laughs> and so when we were doing our planks i kind of felt a little like twinge like in like one of my ovaries and i was like yeah i should probably like chill out a little bit so listen to your body and yeah i didn't injure myself it was just a little twinge and i felt uh, that doesn't feel quite right so i just you know i stopped and moved on to the next exercise i felt fine after that so you know some people have said like oh you're already back to the gym or you know for me <laughs> already it's been years <laughs> since the pan when the pandemic hit we stopped our gym membership and all that but so our exercise was like walking the dogs and um you know we were getting ready to move and all of that and it's just you know it's all about listening to your body and just not pushing it when you shouldn't be so um definitely get up and move and that will help in your recovery process 
and I am so excited to see how this recovery journey continues for me as well. So if there's, um, if there's, if you have any questions, definitely feel free. If you want to if you feel comfortable enough to leave them in the comments, you can absolutely leave them in the comments, or you can always email me directly at lmroberry at gmail.com. I plan to probably do a six month update just to let you know, um, where I'm at at six months and how I'm feeling. Um, but yeah, everything is back to complete normal. I am back to living my life 100% and even better. I'd say probably 500% because I feel like I can do so much more now that I'm not in pain and I'm not having to deal with periods and pain and cramps and all of that stuff. Like it's just... I feel like I can take a breath and just live my life. So I've got more energy and it's just, I feel amazing. So absolutely the best decision I ever made for myself. Do I have regrets? Absolutely not. Not even for a shadow of a doubt do I have any type of regret. This was absolutely the best decision for me and I feel amazing. So I wanted to share my four month post-op video with you guys, my four month post-op feeling and just how life is. So. Um, it's great and I would highly recommend if you are in um, the same boat that I was in and this is something you're considering, I would definitely say give it some honest thought and talk to your talk to your doctor and see if this is the best option for you because it absolutely was for me. So, all right, I hope this has helped you. Like I said, if you are struggling, if you are nervous, if you have this surgery coming up, um, just know that you're not alone. I am here cheering you on and just know that the best is yet to come. So. All right, you guys, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.